Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to see the CBSE chapter, Understanding Elementary Shapes. Understanding Elementary Shapes. So the first thing that we are going to discuss is a point. What is a point? Point is a dot and is a, it is the basic element of geometry. So like if you want to draw something, you keep the pencil here and you uh, make it like this. Something like this to make a house. So now you're um, taking a pencil and keeping a point. So the point that you made was the, uh, was the construction of your uh, was the basic thing for the construction of your house. So this point became a house. So when you uh, so when you kept the pencil and dragged it, you made a series of points. So we'll see next what is this called. So what is a point used for? A point is used for locating something like the place of your house or the uh, or where your school is located like that. So it is represented with a capital letter of the English alphabets. So now here we are going to discuss line, line segment and ray. So what is a line? What is a line segment and what is a ray? So a line has no end points. It uh, extends infinitely in both the directions. And one more important point about line is that you cannot draw the whole picture of a line on a paper. Not anywhere also. So, as you can see, there are two arrow marks here. So, this show, uh, these two arrow marks shows that this line uh, does not stop in any point. It keeps on going in both the directions. And this is a line with two end points. But a line has no end points. So this is a part of a line. So if we take two points in a line and cut the line up, uh, through these two points, we get a line segment. And the line segment always has two end points. You can draw the whole line segment in a piece of paper. So a line is represented like this. So in this case, it is AB. So we are going to put AB. And we are going to put a small bar on top. And we are going to put two lines, seg uh, two arrow marks to show that it is a line. And now for the line segment, what we need to do is we are going to write these two letters on the end points. That is DE now. And we are going to put a little bar. And if you want, you can just put two little points there. So that shows that it is a line segment. And the last one seems like half of a line. So it's like you take a point here. So this is a 
ray and this is a ray so a ray is a part of a line but it is cut only in one uh, one way and the other uh, other side is extending infinitely so and uh, you will represent this uh, this ray like this w x with a small arrow on the top so next we're going to see what an angle is so an angle is formed when two rays come together at a single point as you can see in this picture there are two rays this one and this one so we can't keep on say uh, keep on saying like this one this one so we're going to give some names to this so this uh, these two that is this and this are called the arms called the arms and uh, this point the point where these two rays are uh, are uh, joined is called the vortex so now uh, let's give this angle a name a b c so now we have uh, we also have different types of angles so before we get into the different types of angles we're going to see the different parts of the angle so as you can see here these are marked as interior exterior and boundary so basically interior is a part which is inside the angle that is this part and exterior is the part outside the angle so it's this part and if a point lies on the arms so that is called the boundary so the next one is next we're going to see the different types of angles so um now we have some points lying in the interior exterior and boundaries so now if i ask you like which of the following points lie in the interior of the angle so we'll say points x z and r and if i ask you where uh, where q is you will say it is in the exterior of the angle and s also lies in the exterior and if i ask you which point lies on the boundary of the circle uh, boundary of the angle you are going to say me point y so we'll get into the uh, types of angles now so here we have some angles lying around here and there so this one is there this one this one so how do we classify all of these angles so we classify them according to their de uh, according to like this much degrees this much degrees this much degrees so we can't keep on saying this much this much this much so uh, we are going to 
give measures to these and also give their names. So they are named according to whether they are uh, three angles are there. Three types of angles are there according to whether they are right angles, acute angles or obtuse angles. These all have a reference as 90 degrees. So if it is 90 degrees, it's called right angle. If it is less than 90 degrees, it's called acute angle. If it is more than 90 degrees, it's called obtuse angle. And we have a perfect measure and a, another type of angle for 180 degrees. So this 180 degree angle is called a straight angle. And if an angle is more than 180 degrees and less than 360 degrees, it's called a reflex angle. And if it is correctly 360 degrees, it's called a complete angle. So now let's uh, come to the 2D figures. So these are some 2D figures of triangles. So triangles are classified based on two categories. So the first category is the length of their side and the second category is the, based on their angles. So the, uh, let's see the first category. So the first triangle is this. So this, of course, has no equal sides. All are unequal. So we call this a scalene triangle. Scalene. And this one seems to have two equal sides. So this one is called an isosceles triangle. And this one has all sides equal. And if you observe carefully, you can see that all the angles are also equal. And this gets a name as equilateral tri uh, triangle. And now we are coming to the differentiation based on the angles. So, as we saw the three main angles, acute angle, right angle and obtuse angle. If they become, uh, become triangles, like this is a right angle, this is an acute angle and this is a obtuse angle. So if we bring one more side to all of these angles, they become like the angle name. And instead of the angle, we're gonna add triangle. So we're not call, uh, gonna call it like angles because if we get one more side to add, uh, one more side to it, it will be called a triangle. Try inferring to three and angle says angles. So triangle has three angles and three sides. So this is a right angle triangle. This is an obtuse angle triangle. And this one, this one is an acute angle triangle. So, say these two sides are equal for the right angle triangle, it will be called an isosceles right angled triangle. So, if all the three sides are equal, it will be called a equilateral triangle. It will not, call be, uh, it will not be called a Acute angle equilateral triangle. Now, our last topic for the day is 3D figures. So, 3D figures are the figures that are not flat. These figures are not drawn on paper. You can touch 
and feel them. So the main parts of a uh, 3D figure are what is this? Edges and faces. This is a face. So let me show the faces, edges and vertices and all with this cuboid here. So here the faces, uh, the faces that we can see here are this and this. As you can notice these faces are the visible parts to us. So if you see how many uh, faces a, tra a, rect a rectangle will have, it will have only one face. While this cuboid, this cuboid will have many more than one face. So it's having one, two, three, four, five, six, six faces. Now, the next one is the edges. So the edges are the lines that border the face. So as we told, this one is a face. So this line that is bordering this face is called an edge. So as this edge is straight, we call it a straight edge. So this a rectangle has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this cuboid has twelve edges. Now, what are vertices? Vertices are the points where two or more edges meet. So in case this uh, this cuboid has a vertex, vertex which connects three edges. So this cuboid has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this cuboid has eight vertices. This is a square pyramid and this is a cube also known as a square prism. So this prism, what is a prism? Okay, a prism is like when you add a shape, say a circle, again and again and again and you make a height for the circle so that is called a prism and a circular prism is actually not there why you ask so it is not there because because a square or a triangular prism, if you take a triangular prism, it looks like this. So, you can observe that all the other faces of this prism is having a rectangle. So, this can also be called a square prism because its sides are square and this is called a triangular prism because it has a triangle as a base. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, please like and share. Subscribe for more videos.